Let's focus on one important aspect about amino acids, and that is their being amphoteric, which is again being both an acid and a base. So here, we demonstrated already, so based on the introduction to amino acids I recorded, how an acid becomes an acid, how a base becomes a base. So those answer the question, how? But the question how is different from the question when, as in, when, for example, should I write my amino acid with my carboxyl group as COOH or COO minus? When should I draw my amino group as NH3 plus or NH2? And that is what we will zoom in in this discussion. The ionization of amino acids. Ionization is basically the act of being ionized or having a charge. And if you think about it, when acids become, you know, acids, they act as acids, which is to give out protons, they have a charge after, right? As, uh, acids have a negative charge. Bases will have, instead of a negative charge, a positive charge after they accept a proton. So basically, both the acidic and basic group are ionizable. Now, before I go forward with what I want to say, I want you to say hello to a formula that's normally discussed in general or analytical chemistry courses, the Henderson-Hasselbalch formula. Don't worry, we're not going to compute or anything, but I just want to show you that in this formula, you can actually find this portion, which is the ratio of the ionized to the unionized portion, meaning that the Henderson-Hasselbalch formula kind of tells us something about functional groups or things like these two here, that can have an unionized version, no charge, or ionized version with charge. And it seems like their being charged or not charged is dependent on two other values, the pH of the environment and the intrinsic pKa of that functional group. Remember, the pH is something that you can change by just adding acid or base to the solution in your, let's say, test tube or beaker, so this can be changed. But the pKa of a certain functional group you are focusing on, let's say the COOH or NH2, will never change. In the first place, K here stands for constant, right? So here, what I want to say is that for every functional group like this one or this one that can have a charge, they have their own pKa values. So we can have something like for NH2, the pKa of NH2. Or for COOH, the pKa of COOH, something like that. Now, there is something that I need to tell you here. The relationship of the pH and the pKa value would actually answer the question when. They will guide us in answering if I should write my COOH as COOH or COO minus NH2 or NH3 plus. And this is basically the guideline. I'm skipping the mathematics because it would need a lot of proof checking from the equation, but let's get to the shortcut. So basically, the situation will depend first on whether your group is an acidic group or a basic group, simply because their charges are not the same in the first place. Now, before we even go to this table below, there are words here that we are not yet familiar, and we will have to unlock them here at the top first. So we can say that the COOH here is the protonated version of the carboxyl group, and this COO- minus is called the deprotonated version. Now, what, why is that? When you say protonated, it has a proton. It has an H. Or at least, compared to the deprotonated, de means removed, the protonated version has one H more. The protonated versions have 1H less. And obviously, you can see here the evidence. So here, between NH3 and NH2, the one with the more protons, with the more Hs, the NH3 plus is now the protonated form. And here, the NH2 is the deprotonated form. Also note that the charges exist variably, meaning... For example, if you look at the acid, the one which actually has the charge of negative is the deprotonated state, but here in the basic functional group, the one with the positive charge is the protonated state. And, well, basically that's what it is, okay? And you're seeing these things on top 
also at the bottom. So here, let's see what's up. Usually, when the pKa is well greater than the pH, you could think of the protonated form dominating. So meaning, if my acidic group is protonated, like so, there is no charge, right? But if my pH, the environment, has a higher value than the pKa of that acidic functional group, it now becomes deprotonated, and that means we will have to have a negative charge, like so. For a basic functional group, when the pH of the environment is lesser than the pKa, we will have the protonated form, just like acidic. But take note again that the protonated form is actually the one with the charge for the basic functional groups. And when the pH is greater than the pKa, that's the time that the basic functional group will be deprotonated and would have no charge. Okay? So it's kind of a mess right here because here we're trying to grasp like two or three different concepts that we have to integrate. And usually I think the best way to get to, to, to know this better is by answering straight to the point a question like this. So here we have the question. Draw alanine at the given pH values. Correct ionization. So you're not allowed to make a mistake. If you're supposed to write COO minus, you're not allowed to write COOH and vice versa. Now, we are actually ha we are actually given the pKa values and usually you should be given the pKa values. Okay, so the pKa of the COOH is 2.4 and for the amino group is 9.9 .9 for, for, for alanine. Now, remember, alanine is this one. So remember, an amino acid will always have an amino group, a COOH group, and the R group. For alanine, if you remember, its R group is only a methyl group. Now, supposedly, okay, we should write the correct version of these two. So we have to erase them first because we're going to do the application part. How? So for example, isn't it that the pKa of COOH is 2.4? Okay, so that's the, so the pKa is 2.4, all right? So that's the value here. And the pH right now is 1. Now, question. Is the pH of 1 greater or less than 2.4? And actually, as I write this, it obviously means that 1 is less than 2.4. And so if we have less than for the acidic group, we will have to use the protonated form and the protonated form of COOH is, well, COOH. How about for the amino group? Now let's erase this and then let's replace this with 9.9. .9. The pH is still 1. It didn't change. So is 1 greater or lesser than 9.9? .9? Obviously, 1 is less than 9.9. .9, so even for our NH2, for the basic functional group, less than, so we will choose the protonated form. But take note that protonated means you're going to have to write NH3+. And so, that is what we will put here. So this is the structure of alanine at pH 1 with the proper charges. And actually, the overall charge is only one positive charge. So the net charge is positive 1. Okay, let's try another one. How about if my pH is 5.5? And you're just going to do the same thing again and again and again. So for example, again, the pKa of the COOH is 2.4. So 2.4 and then 5.5. Is 5.5 greater or less than 2.4? It's greater already, right? And since the pH is now greater than the pKa for our COOH, our acidic group, we will now be forced to draw the deprotonated form. And the deprotonated form is COO minus. So now you kind of see some change going on as my pH changes. Okay? However, since you know 5.5 compared to the amino group's pKa 9.9, 5.5 is still lesser than, is still lesser than, so we still need to draw the positive version of the amino group, which is NH3 plus. And here, actually, the net charge, if you think about it, one positive and one negative would give us zero. And in biochemistry, actually, when we hit this charge of zero, there's a special name for this version of the amino acid. 
this ion, ionic form of the amino acid is called the zwitter ion. Okay? Now for pH of 12, let's do the comparison. Let's compare 12 to the pKa of COOH and the pKa of the NH2. I think you already see where this is going. Since 12 is greater than both 2.4 and 9.9, we're gonna draw both the deprotonated forms of the amino and the carboxyl groups. So the deprotonated form of the carboxyl is once again COO minus, but the deprotonated form of the amino group is this time NH2. And the charge now is negative 1.